So you're doing interval training to improve your VO2 max, high intense intervals above threshold to increase your aerobic capacity, but you're stagnating. Your VO2 max is not increasing. Your FTP is maybe also not increasing. You don't see the results. Here's likely why. You set up your training intensity for those intervals using a percentage of your threshold power. FTP or threshold space or lactate threshold, it doesn't matter. It's actually about the same issue, okay? So you have determined your individual threshold power and now you use that to create a so-called individual training zone to train in your six by four minutes or eight by four minutes or four by five minutes, whatever you use, VO2 max intervals. Let's have a look at a very typical example of two athletes here, athlete A and athlete B, with slightly different training status, slightly different physiology to understand why even though you have individual training zones, you don't see the progress in your VO2 max intervals. So imagine we have two athletes here, same body weight, just for the sake of simplicity, could be different body weights, but it, it makes it easier here to explain. And let's assume they also have different FTP values. So your athlete A has an FTP of 300 watts, athlete B of 250 watts. So you can see it's kind of normal, common numbers for amateur and recreation athletes, right? And now let's assume they both have the same VO2 max, which they're trying to improve. Now, if you look at that, so to speak, our FTP value shown here as a um, you know, black rectangle, so show how much power that is. You can see the FTP obviously is lower because he only has an FTP of 250 watts in our example. But because they have the same VO2 max, now what you can do, you can translate VO2 max by body weight and gross efficiency into power output. So because they do have the same VO2 max, their VO2 max equivalent power would approximately be the same. This is why you see they have the same um, bar height here. Okay, now your literature tells you that your individual training zone for FTP view, FTP based VO2 max intervals would be approximately, right? 120% of FTP is what you use as a VO2 max training zone, right? Now, what happens if you have FTP of 300 watts in athlete A and you go 120%? No, guess what? That's approximately exactly spot on the power output equaling 60 milliliters. Why that is 60 milliliters multiplied by 75 kilograms and then divided by 23% um, of uh, gross efficiency gives you pretty much exactly 360 watts of power output equaling VO2 max. So this is, so to speak, the power the aerobic system can deliver. Now, because this athlete has the same VO2 max here, he also has the same 360 watts of maximum aerobic capacity or maximum aerobic power to be more precisely. Now, you go 120% of FTP, and now you can easily do the math, 300 watts, 120%, that's exactly 360 watts. So for athlete A, this athlete actually exercises at 100% of his VO2 max power. Athlete B, however, FTP of 250 watts, 120% brings him only, so to speak, to 300 watts. But his VO2 max power is 360. So he's exercising not at the same percentage, so to speak, of his VO2 max. And that's simply because the utilization of VO2 max at FTP or athlete A is relatively high, right? And the utilization of this athlete here because of his training status, his physiology, his phenotype, so on and so forth, is lower and therefore going to 120% of FTP is not cutting it for him. Right? This athlete stays at a much lower percentage of his VO2. Why does it matter? Well, literature tells us several very good made, well-made scientific studies tell us that your improvement of actually VO2 max, the improvement of the aerobic capacity, actually scales pretty nicely with the time spent at a high percentage of VO2 max. So the more time you spend at a high percentage of VO2 max, the higher your VO2 max will be get. 
Okay, so we said you do the same kind of interval training, four by four minutes, six by four minutes. So the type is somewhat fixed, right? You have your kind of training program. The difference is this athlete here spends most of his time, so spends these intervals actually at VO2 max power, increasing his VO2 max, his VO2 to VO2 max in the interval, while this athlete does not, because 120% of his power of FTP brings him well below VO2 max. How would that look like? So if you, just for the sake of an example, let's say this here represents a four minute interval. So VO2, you know, you have a resting VO2 is somewhere down here. And then during the interval, there's this fast phase, right? It goes up and somewhere here close to VO2 max. And then there comes the recovery period. Great. So if you look at the time, for example, if you look at the time very popular in the literature above 90% of VO2 max, Right, you have this area, so to speak, here, which is spent at the high VO2 max. This is the area you want to increase. You want to maximize, you want to increase the time spent at high VO2 max. That works pretty good for athlete A. Athlete B, however, VO2 max is showing 60 watts. He's only exercising at 300 because he's taking 120% of 250 watts. VO2 max, VO2 down here is you know, resting value, then it goes up, it will go up slower. Okay, so the kinetics is already slower because the intensity is not that high. Okay, it will go up a little bit slower and then it will only go up here, right? Not all the power is zero, but it will just stay below this equivalent, equivalent of 300 watts and then it will drop again. So it's actually not tapping into that high percentage of VO2 max utilization. And this is again, according to peer-reviewed, well-established literature, the key to improve VO2 max itself. So long story short, a different threshold power, similar or same VO2 max, means that your individual percentage of FTP to determine your training zone for VO2 max doesn't cut it. Because different athletes have their FTP or threshold power at different percentages of the VO2 max, and without knowing your very VO2 max, it's basically gambling and finger crossing and hoping that you hit the right training zone. So what you need to do is you need to know not only your FTP value, but you need to know especially your VO2 max value and understand what duration do I need of an interval and what especially intensity do I need to really maximize the time spent at the high percentage of VO2 max because this is the main KPI, the main trigger, the main identifier that will drive development of VO2 max. So you basically need to know these values individually, individually for yourself to ensure that the training you're doing is actually increasing VO2 max. Because again, science is very clear, if you're not maximized that, then we see very little or no improvements. So if you're doing VO2 max intervals, using percentage of FTP and you don't see a progress, very likely your individual metabolic profile is responsible for that, that you basically didn't do the correct training intensity.